What's up? I need to gaming here. War for the Overworld. This is... Um, yep, long time coming. Yep, this is the first time I'm going to actually look at it myself. Jobs has already done a video um, and uploaded it. I wasn't available. I was busy doing IRL stuff and not able to mm. join in with the recording. Which um, was a shame, but you're here now. Yes, yes, I'm here now. Um, what are we doing, Jobs? Well, we can We've look got two... at uh, the sandbox side. Right, you want to do the sandbox side? Well, I yeah. did the goodly conflict, which I called the godly conflict because I misread that, but I, I did the goodly conflict in the other one, but I didn't do it all the way through, so we've still got stuff that can be shown there. Okay, well, um, I have, I don't know that much about this game, and obviously you've been okay. following on the forums and been, you know, really watching the development and seeing what's going on. So what I we have do, tried to as best as I can, yeah. Yeah, what we can do... We go in, have a look at the sandbox thing, and then you can explain everything to me and let me know everything I need to know. Yeah? I will do my best, sir. Okay. Yes. Alright, I'm clicking it. There's a little bit of a loading screen right now. Right, I'm in. So, this is not so Dungeon you Heart, is it? It's not going to be called a Dungeon Heart. No, no, no. It's going to be called... And, uh, it's... In order to, before you, it's going to be called something, there's one of three options, uh, Sanctum, Nexus, and Core. Okay. And I like the idea of a Core. But there's no, there's no specific prefix either, so it's not going to be called a Dungeon Core, if it was picked as Core. So there isn't any, any specific name. The devs have picked Nexus at the moment, but they're not fixed on having that. Your Nexus is under Hence attack. The it just doesn't sound right, does it? it yeah, I know. It feel like it's urgent. So this this is basically the game that every single fan of Dungeon Keeper 2 has been waiting for. Isn't it? More or less. I like Dungeon Keeper, the first one. Yeah. Uh, well, I never played uh, anything before Dungeon Keeper 2. But this isn't oh, Dungeon no, Keeper you're 3. Get, you're going to get as much hate mail as that. me, then. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. No. No. But we've no, been waiting... It's War for the Overworld that's been taken a lot of inspiration from other games as well as Dungeon Keepers. But just by looking at it, it seems like mainly Dungeon <laughs> Keeper too. It's it's or heavily Dungeon Keeper in inspired general. by yeah. So I'm actually really excited to see how this game's gonna turn out. Uh, me and Jobs both um, pledged on uh, Kickstarter. Like, as um, soon as we could, as soon as we knew it was available yeah, to do that. We jumped on it, big time. I think we were actually faster than Total Biscuit, were we not? Were we? I think we... I, 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 well, I, I don't know about when I, we I knew remember... exactly about it, but it, I, I'm pretty sure we pledged before his video came out, because I was already watching the... Uh, yeah, I was watching when it spiked, when he did his spotlight of it and he was like yeah you should probably go to kickstart and all of a sudden it was like 22,000 extra extra pounds or something something like that it's, it's just jumped a lot mm. large amount which was and good to see the the everyone managed to get the main kickstarter goal and then after that there was a second goal to see if we can get the person who voiced dungeon keeper 2 to voice Rich this one Dryden, as well yeah and that's happened doesn't it it has, yes, with they've that flex goal. There's other flex goals still available and the more money that they get in there they're gonna be looking towards continually adding more things with the available money that they have. So they're not just sort of saying, you know, donate to us and we'll keep the money. It's donate to add more and more to this game eventually. Right, so what are the other flex goals for? Um oh there's loads of them. Um I can't even remember half of them. There was there was a load of stuff um, right off the right off the bat they wanted to do. Uh, let's have a look. Well, we still got the um, create imp spell from Dungeon Keeper Two, which is nice. Yes, it means yes. we can get our digging done a bit quicker. Um, we haven't got hatcheries though, have we? We've got micro piglets for food instead. No, no, yeah, the hatcheries are out, which is a good thing. In Good my thing. opinion, because, yeah, because, you know, it's not hatcheries, it's proper micro piglets for once. Mm. That's what we were waiting for. Really? 
But uh, yeah, once I knew that they was, once I knew that they weren't doing um, hatchery. Well, once I knew they weren't doing the hatchery, I was like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? And a lot of people were asking, what what could they possibly do? And then they, that the news came that they were going to have micro piglets, and that was that. I, I was like, yes, we need them. That's going to be awesome. I'm trying to find a list of flex goals. There's. It's very difficult to find a list, which is a shame. Sorry, guys, I should be a lot quicker at this one. Yeah, you should be on the ball jobs. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, there was. They've already confirmed they're doing a multiplayer aspect. Okay. Um, there is were that other player v player or sort of a co-op type thing. Well, there's co -op, lots of people have been asking for co-op, and that's going to be called Two Lords One Dungeon. Okay. Theoretically. Yep. Um, that's the working title for that at the moment. Um, people have asked for a survival mode. People have asked for what Ooh. about matchmaking and ranking. That's going to be, by the looks of it, that's why they've done Steam. That's what they're saying about having Steam. Is okay. matchmaking will be done through Steam, and they are aiming to have ladders and ranked matches and proper competitive play um, awesome. to give it longevity. Yeah. There's also other little side things like they want to put Easter eggs in there. People have asked for um, extended campaigns, uh, playing on the hero side. I don't know why you'd want to play hero side in in, <laughs> in a dungeon keeper spiritual successor. You know, well, it, it, I wouldn't you necessarily want, to, want good. to do it, but it would be nice to have it. You know, yeah, the good thing about like, Kickstarter really? is fans of uh, the games could really get involved and. In, uh, put forward ideas to how they like the game developed and stuff, don't they? Well, this is it. This is why the forums have been so awesome. Um, but yeah, there, there is going to be there is going to be a multiplayer side and it is going to be able to have a at least a player versus player, even mm. if it's not a co-op. So that's definitely confirmed as happening. Has anything been mentioned about player-created content? Uh, well, yes, that's part of that's another part of why they've gone to Steam. That's why they've accessed the right. Steam side of things, because it allows them to use the Steam sort of software and servers and everything that's already in place. And it means that as an indie sort of company, they can't afford to do all that themselves. It just isn't viable. Mm -hmm. So using Steam is, you know, the best way for them to to cope with all of that. Right. So that's because I, I feel that's a really good idea to uh, increase the, the longevity of the game. Yeah, the, yeah, the replayability, the longevity of the actual game in general. Yeah, it, the, mm. you need to be able to do that. So we're quite limited at the moment uh, for the rooms that we have. We can't place any traps, can we? Uh, there are no traps at the moment. There is a foundry. Um, the hammer boundary. tab. Okay. That should really be placed. Uh, is it? Is it the same issue with Dungeon Keeper 2? Should that be placed near the uh, layer and hatcher? Uh, micro piglet thingies? <laughs> the slaughterhouse and the uh, lair. I do believe it is still going to be called a lair. I don't think there's an issue with them calling it a lair. Yeah. So many, so many things have lairs of some kind. Um, no, I, well, I don't know specific what they're doing. There's veins of evil. Veins um, of evil. What are these? Yes. What are they? So, what basically what it is is a new mechanic that they're trying to introduce for this, and it really looks like a good idea. Um, it's there's going to be sloth, wrath, and greed. Okay. Um, so, sort of based on the names are based on sins, but it's not. You shouldn't take it as well. There's only sort of three of the seven sins. You know, why, where's the other? Don't don't look at them as specifically sins. They just use the name because it was pretty cool. It's more to mm. do with the mechanic of a sort of rock, paper, scissors type thing. Rock, paper, okay. So you've got Wrath that will be sort of a quicker approach, so you'd research um, things for the Wrath tree, which would mean that you can hopefully get some aggressive units quick, so sort of get right. the rooms that relate to those aggressive units quick and early on, and that would help you go on an attack 
but then you have Sloth, which would be more for a turtle in defensive player, which will help you get oh, lots of defences, okay. shore up walls, that sort of thing. So, you know, Wrath would go against Sloth, but Sloth could theoretically hold out against Wrath, but Greed would get caned by Wrath. Right. And Greed would be better in the later game because the Greed tree allows you to, you know, bank more mana and gold, and it you know, gives you sort of rooms like, I think, the Treasury. They haven't released information on wrath and greed yet they've only showed us the sloth tree and only some of it okay so at the moment we're a little bit unsure as to exactly what rooms would go into what tree but it will be you have to start researching you'd have to have you get given a certain amount of research points to begin with and they come in at a certain rate that slows down they mm -hmm. obviously haven't worked out the specifics about what rate everything's going to happen, but you'll get points in general that okay. you can spend into researching in the trees. And that can be sped up with things uh, like the cultist and that researching in the archive. There is no library. Okay. It's an archive. It's an archive, right, okay. So it's essentially a library, but it's not called a library. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the sort of thing. But there's going to be more options related. It's not like you have to just have, um, like we used to have a, a, a troll or a bile demon, which I never used to use bile demons. But it's not like just have certain units that must be in this certain place, and that's what they do. Mm. There's going to be a lot more options to have creatures doing things, and it be more of an alive dungeon and flowing and moving and breathing. Right. I've got some creatures turning up at the moment. I've got one that looks a bit like a goblin from Dungeon Keeper 2. Uh, okay, I think that would be the gnarling. The gnarling? Okay, what's the gnarling all about? The gnarling. Yeah. Uh, but it is basically the replacement for... The goblin. The the goblin. Okay, so... Good in small packs and stuff like that. That sort of thing. Uh, they, they were mentioning another mechanic of... There, there were ideas being thrown around where... Some units might react upon other units, and if they're in a group, they sort of strengthen each other. You know, right. and they have that sort of pack mentality, a horde mentality of, you know, on our own we're useless, but as a group we will mess you up even faster. What? So that's so. So that's going to go um, across a lot of types of. I believe, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, at the moment it's it's more aimed at the gnarling stage. Right. At those sorts of. Uh, the gnarling units maybe other ones similar to that the they, they're going to do beast units and intelligent units right so you have the uh, the ones that just sort of basically throw themselves into anything without any thought to what's going on yeah and there's going to be those sorts of units and then you're going to have the more human-ish and you know, intelligent side of things where they will be support roles like cultist and stuff like that, where you will be, well, they they will start to have a little bit more of a strategy on their attack and such. Awesome. So I've got a few, uh, a few also, more creatures. Yeah, what else? Um, I've got something that looks like a gargoyle. Which I do believe would be a gargoyle. Okay, the other one is a cultist. That's essentially the new warlock, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And sense. what's this huge thing with a big metal arm? Ah, an auger. An auger. Yes. Okay. So what an do auger. they do? They are very interesting. You see that huge metal arm that he's wandering around with. Mm hmm. That would that will be upgradable. Up his arm. They will upgrade the components that they have by finding and salvaging scrap on the battlefield or wow. anywhere, just laying around. So wow, so you can level up, up... You can like, they upgrade will level individual up and units. So will their weaponry. Um, wow. Well, you can... It's not a speci I don't think it's a specifically conscious thing that you have to micromanage. Okay. But as they gain levels themselves... So similar to Dungeon Keeper 2, where to... they gain levels, but with this one, he'll upgrade his weaponry. He has the option to start picking up stuff and put that into his weapon, as well as leveling himself up. Wow. So you could have loads of augers that are, like, 
you know, level sort of 10 or whatever, which would be great, but then they'll be massacred by augurs that are level, you know, sort of 7 with upgraded weaponry. Right, okay. So so you really need so to sort it, of balance the two. So you can't just think, yeah, you can't just think, oh, look, he's got a few augurs, I'll send, you know, five more of mine against him and it'll all be good. No, there's little bits that are going to be involved in it that are going to really mean you have to pay a lot more attention to what you're doing. So are there other uh, creatures, minions, whatever they're called, that have similar sort of mechanics? Um, well, I mentioned the fact that the Gnarlins are going to have the have a group pack horde thing. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to... There's a lot more emphasis on the units using their different abilities. Um, okay. Because I can remember in, in DK2 it was a, very, it was a lot of uh, like the Dark Elf will just shoot a bow. That is it. Even though they have other attacks, they'll be shooting a bow. When they're on their own, and you're not actually possessing them, they'll use, like, one attack, and that will be it. Okay. Whereas the units in this are going to start to have more options, and they will utilise the options. So better AI? Yes, much better AI, to the point where, you know, you can... You're not going to be able to expect that if I stick my so-and-so here and I know they're going to be doing X attack you're like, well, they may do X attack for a certain period of time because it makes sense but then they will decide that there's a better attack for the units that are now closer so they will switch and start to understand what they're supposed to be doing a lot more Right So how much of this game is actually working at the moment in the beta? Well the bedrock beta, you see this this is the issue, the main thing is calling it a lot of people have been saying, Well it's not really a beta, is it? It's an alpha and the even the developers have said it's not don't specifically consider it a beta. Okay. It's the bedrock beta because it's the bedrock of the game. This is like we've right. worked on making the foundation of what will then be built upon. So this is basically showing so right now you're what the devs have at the moment. Yeah, well, I dare say they've got a little bit more up well, their yeah, sleeve, but... you know, that they're working on. But yeah, generally, this is what has been released as you have this and this will work. Right, okay. You know? So they're going to keep doing updates and keep adding new stuff and everybody with access to the oh, yes. Bedrock Beta is going to be able to see all this as it happens. Yeah? Yeah, they're going to be right. watching it. They're going to be part of the development process to an extent because if you're on so the we forums, can go on there and shout at them if they do something completely wrong and terrible you could but to be honest the community is so awesome i cannot i cannot stress that enough the community there is really really good it's a load of people um there isn't any sort of oh sharp new fag sort of thing it's very much like yeah okay so you've come here you don't quite know what you're doing let, let us help you Awesome. And you, the devs are there a lot, saying, "Okay, this is what's happening. This is the issues. Yes, you're right. Blah blah blah." And they'll talk it through. They won't just ignore the forums and ignore the community. They're right there with us, like day to day basis. So, how often are they going to be uh, releasing new content and updates and things like that? From what I can remember, the theory is that it's more of it's sort of a two week cycle. Um, okay. of bug fixing and they were th hopefully going to be introducing and aiming for new content of some kind every month so you'll okay. be seeing bug fixing and little things creeping in and then an update of here's some more stuff that we've been working on this month Okay. and getting a, a new lot of things to do stuff with okay um also watching the, the live stream as, as the beta went live um, there's been confirmation which I don't think uh, Dante slash Crawlius was supposed to sort of say anything about but uh, he's he's confirmed that he's voice acting as well and awesome. if none of you know about his voice you should really go and check it out because his voice is is up there as you know, should be part of this game. So there Obviously, are Richard two different you know, voice actors. Uh, 
Yes, there's also somebody else. Uh, was it Stratos Rex that was confirmed as being working with the project? I've checked out some of his uh, voice acting. He's got a good range at his disposal, let's say that. Um, so that's going to be good. So that's a conf uh, pretty confirmed third mm -hmm. voice actor. And they have said that they'll obviously be looking at, because there are female units, they, would, they will be looking for... A female. They haven't confirmed who it may be, but yes, right. they will. They are looking for a, a female voice actor as well. So, so, all of the different units are going to be saying bits and pieces and having their own phrases. As far as I can tell, there should be. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more speech involved with your minions. Awesome. It's not going to be such a stagnant dungeon where they just make a little noise here and there. It's not going wow. to be carried by music, you know. It's going to, there's going to be the other thing being said and things moving around and actually being alive. Wow! So this is sounding really impressive so far. Yeah, there's, there's they the devs have not just sat back and thought, let's try and recreate and update a, a an already good formula. They've said, let's take the good parts out of good formulas, get rid of all the bad but not just leave that an empty space now. Let's fill that bad space we took away, all the stuff, with good things that are really good. So is there um, any information on things like gemstones? So uh, right, in gem, DK2... Gemstone seams. Yeah. Is there going to be yeah, anything else they, like that? Um, anyone that can remember... They, what were the gemstones? Explain them, because I'm talking um, a hell of a lot here. Okay, Dungeon Keeper 2, um, obviously you needed to mine gold from uh, the surrounding area where you're building your dungeon, and that's what you would use to pay your creatures, uh, you spend it to build rooms, to uh, train your creatures, etc. And obviously that's a finite resource, so what we had in Dungeon Keeper 2 were gemstone seams, so it would be like... Um, a seam of gold like you have here but obviously it would be made out of gemstones and that wouldn't run out so what you could do is you could dig say the area around it and build a treasury around it just like this one over here and you could have your imps just digging non-stop and you'd have an infinite supply of money which was really really useful in some of the uh, bigger more challenging maps yeah so what's going to be happening now is they're looking at shrines and such things like that so you okay. won't have gem scenes um, what they're gonna do is have other things that must be claimed that will then start to produce extra bits for you but then you would once claiming it have to then defend it against anybody else so it's not going to be as infinite ah. whereas as you say a gem so scene once you had once you found that gem scene you built you know, a room around it, no one would ever bother looking to come near you. That was it. Right. So now with this Whereas other this one, thing... you have shrines that must be defended. They're in strategic so it, locations where... A slight element of King of the Hill, maybe? Around these shrines? Shrines? Yeah, to, to an extent, that's the sort of... Yeah. So they're yeah, like... Yeah, you're going to be battling like, for them. Wow, that's that sounds really impressive. Loads of fun. Yeah, so it's not, it's not, it's not so fixed in the once you've got it good for you it's so uh, surely you'd be able to um defend it well enough to make it impenetrable because that's that was one of my favorite things to do in uh dungeon keeper is to build a massive dungeon and make it especially a pet dungeon and make it so that they could just throw waves upon waves upon waves of enemies at you and they they couldn't break through which i suppose is also what the survival mode's going to be if are they, are they, well, they, they are or? discussed that's not confirmed as as actually happening. That would be a fl another flex goal. Right, another um, flex goal. So where we need to... if yeah, if there is enough funding and time, they will be doing that if they feel it's worth doing. But it hasn't been confirmed as you know a a hundred percent necessary to do such a thing and b viable financially yet. I think uh, survival mode would be really really good. If you think about um it'd be intense orcs must die the original orcs must die was a phenomenal game i'm a huge huge fan but what it didn't have was co-op or survival you 
in order to do uh, things similar to survival, you'd have to edit the amount of waves that uh, would get thrown at you. Whereas in Orcs Must Die 2, they added in the co-op and the survival, and it made the the game just so much better. There was so much more to do, and yeah. so I think that would be good to have in this. I'm I'm all, I'm all for yeah. survival. But that, that's that's something that you might want to to go and you know vote for and look up. Mm. Wow. And as I say, you you've, you've you've you have the ability just as I do to to come visit forums and watch this dev process. Well, I'm I'm a very busy man. I can swing it every <laughs> now and then, but yeah. So is there? A, I'm getting quite a few creatures in my dungeon now. Is there a cap on it? Uh, right, or does it uh, work like, the amount of uh, gateways? They're not portals, are they? The gateways. There is not going to be that that cap like there was in you know in like there would like had been happening in DK2 where a certain number could come through a specific portal and you know expand. It there isn't a cap like that. What's going to happen is it's it would slow down again, the same as your research points and that. As you start to get more, it slows down. So eventually, it would get to the point of it being so long before your next minion comes in that you may as well consider it capped. But All if right. left long enough, it will just keep. If you have enough layer space and there's enough available places for creatures to be, they will keep turning up. Eventually. So, building a dungeon and then going down the pub and turning up to find your dungeon still going it could work in this. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's, it could a, that's, really a, like it. that's another thing I really liked about Dungeon Keeper. You sit there for you know a good two three hours making your dungeon, and you could get up and walk out and go and do whatever it was you wanted to do, and leave your dungeon ticking over. Yes, as this sort of self-contained little it's sort of a biosphere of its own, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you could do that, and it just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the, this. Yeah, this would this would wow. allow that possibility. Wow, that's that's really exciting to me. So I think um, I've done everything I can do in this. Okay. At the moment, I've got a couple of the book rooms. What are they called again? <laughs> the uh, archives. Archives, all right. So I've got a couple of archives. I've got a big um, hammer room. The uh, foundry. Foundry. I've got two slaughterhouses and a lair and a treasure room treasure have you room. looked at the micro piglets yet uh not really i mean oh. you can see them they, they are just like the micro piglets that were running around in the prisons in uh dk2 yeah they're just diddy diddy piglets but they're edible and you can actually encourage their their growth okay i am now a micro piglet <laughs> Have you noticed that they're, they're not exactly attached to anything specifically? They, uh, what just happened? I um, don't know. Yeah, they kind of float around, don't they? Yeah. There's obviously a lot of work on animation still to be done. Well, when when there's, there's a classic joke at the moment. When's the bedrock beta available? When pigs fly. <laughs> so it's obviously it's available now. because the pigs are flying. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that has been intended. They have noticed that as a bug. It, uh, but there was also something else in the live stream. They said one of the bugs they encountered whilst developing it was something that ended up having uh, the imp's heads as big as the map. Wow! And that's that's quite a bug. <laughs> quite a large bug. I'm just looking to see if I can um, slap any of these guys. It's not working. No, the animation's there, but you can't actively slap anything except the buttons. You you can buttons. apparently slap the buttons. The buttons. Okay. I I found that quite humorous. You can slap a button, but you can't slap the minions, which is exactly what you want to do. <laughs> I used to love popping chickens. Yeah. So um, I haven't seen the other type of map that there is the, available yet. The goodly yet. conflict. The goodly conflict. I'd like to check that out. Okay. Right. Shall we move over to that then? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do some of that.